Hello, my name is Dave with the Drew Technologies support team. Today, I'm going to go over performing a reflash of the DME module using ISTA-P. ISTA-P is the BMW software that is used for reprogramming and coding modules on BMW vehicles. For the installation instructions of the BMW software, see the video in Toolbox under the Flashing tab, BMW, and then BMW Install Video. Let's go over a couple of very important things you need to remember before we get started with a programming session. Always use a battery maintainer to keep the battery voltage to the manufacturer specifications during the reprogramming process. Maintaining proper battery voltage will avoid programming issues. A battery maintainer is not the same as a battery charger. Always remember to use a power supply with your laptop. Don't run the chance of the laptop losing power in the middle of a programming session. Also, disable the screensaver and sleep function modes on the PC and also disable any firewall or antivirus software that you may have running as these can interfere with the programming process. Finally, never reprogram an ECM unless you are directed by a technical service bulletin or the service manual. Now that we have our car set up, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the BMW uh, website, which is bmwtechinfo.com. And this is the home page, and it has several useful sections on it, as we can see. The first section is the login section where you're going to enter your username and your password to gain access to everything the site has to offer you when working on a BMW. Next, you have the section of the OSS system status. You want to make sure all of these are checked green before proceeding. If they're not green, it means there's an issue with the website, possibly ISTA, ISTA-P is not working correctly and you'd want to uh, make sure that is all green before you proceed so you don't run into any problems. Now we can uh, go ahead and log in, agree to the uh, terms and conditions to proceed to the site. And this is the front page that show all the recent service bulletins with a short description. So now go ahead and take your mouse and go over the OSS and come down to Vehicle Programming and then click ISTA-P. Wait for the Start Test to appear. The Start button here will turn green and then the word Start will actually appear. And when you have that, you're okay to proceed. Go ahead and click Start to start the ISTA-P application. Now this can take several minutes as it checks the initialization, installation, and does the startup for the application. And once that's done, the IS2P launch window will open up when everything's been checked and it's ready to start the new session. Once we get our IS2P window that opens up, click on the Create a New Session. Click the radio button that's next to select ISTA-P server automatically. Then you're going to click continue. This is where you're going to be allowed to select your interface and click connect. Now we need to wait for the vehicle information to be completed. And this can take several minutes due to the communication bus speed, especially on older vehicles. Okay, now at this point, I didn't hook up the power supply to the vehicle because I wanted you guys to see that if you don't have it, this reminder will pop up and it will warn you. You either have two choices at this point. You connect your power supply, your battery maintainer, or you can go ahead and leave the session. Of course, we're going to go ahead and hook up the maintainer so we can go ahead and proceed on with the flash. Now the vehicle identification 
is continuing in the background and ISTAP is now downloading all of the vehicle information. Now in the meantime you can see up at the top where the terminal 15 and terminal 30 voltage reads. The voltage is now starting to go up from the power supply that we connected and went ahead and turned on. And pretty soon that message behind us will go ahead and clear itself. Now if the data update has an issue, you can always reattempt it and it will pick up where it left off and it will not start all over from the beginning. Now in the next process, ISTAP will ask you about module replacement. In this case, we are doing an update, so we're going to select no. But be sure that you make yourself familiar with ISTAP's user documentation concerning preparation and follow-up for vehicle programming. Go ahead and check the box and click continue. At this point, ISTAP has finished identifying the vehicle and is checking the vehicle over to confirm which modules this vehicle is actually equipped with. You can scroll through the list of possible modules and systems while identification is proceeding. Once all of the identification is completed, the measuring plans will be calculated. When using a J2534 device or an interface, the duration estimate will always be unavailable. Once completed, we can take a look at all the installed modules on the vehicle by clicking on the Control Module Tree tab. If you click on the Process Control Modules tab, we can select which modules we want to program, code, or replace. And then finally, the Action List tab will show what actions you've selected to do and their status. Now let's go back to the Process Control tab. We're going to select DME for the Digital Motor Electronics module, and we will select Programming. When we select programming, it's automatically going to force the encoding of this module. Once that's done, you can click Determine Measures Plan. Wait for this process to complete. This can take up to a minute or two, so be patient. Once the measures plan has been populated, go ahead, take a look at it. Once you click Accept Measures Plan, you are ready to proceed with the flashing. At this point, there is no going back, so you really need to make sure that when you click the Accept Measures plan, you are ready to start the flash. Otherwise, you want to hit the back button, go back, double check everything that you've already previously done so you don't run into a problem. Keep an eye on the box labeled DME slash DDE. This shows you the status of the module programming. Use a maintainer. It is very, very important that you keep the battery voltage above the minimum spec that BMW recommends so you do not run into flash failures. Now just to let you know, we went ahead and sped up this video. We did want you to see what the process looks like, but we understand you guys 
um, don't have all the time in the world to watch a video all day long. So we sped up the process, um, and we just want you to be aware of that. Now we're just going to follow the prompts on the computer screen when it tells us to turn the key off and pull it from the slot in the dash. Be very patient at this point. This is a BMW and flashing can take some time. Once that's done, we'll put the key back in the dash and the key to the on position with the engine off. Now this particular vehicle does have some known issues with the alternator and a dead occupancy sensor in the passenger seat. We're going to go ahead and click yes to allow the application to proceed with the fault handling. Now due to the nature of the issue that we're having with the occupancy sensor, this issue will persist. It will continue to come up. We will go ahead and just keep clicking OK because that's our only option. Now go ahead and check the box to assure ISTA-P that you're going to go directly to ISTA and figure out the occupancy sensor concern, then click OK. ISTA-P will now go back through its module identification process. Once the final report is populated, you can scroll through it as needed. Now we updated the uh, DME module with the same part number, but normally the old and new integration levels would be different. We can now click Continue Session and go back to the Vehicle Details tab if you need to program another module, or we can go ahead and click End Session to finish the programming session. Once that is done, you can click on the large X in the upper right hand corner, click close the application, and now you can log out and programming and coding of the DME module we just did is finished. Now that our programming is complete, we can clear any codes and road test the vehicle to be sure our concern is corrected before returning the vehicle to the customer. We hope you have found this video helpful and informative for using ISTP. Check out the Toolbox software for more informative videos on using your Jeru Technologies J2534 device, and thanks for watching.